Hello, dear friends here. Welcome, welcome to this study session for the book Homo Certo. And if I haven't met you before, my name is Shane Martin. I am here with the Spirit Society of, of Richmond. And this is a collaboration between us and Kardec Radio. Welcome. I hope that we are going to have the next hour together studying the book Homo Certo by Emmanuel through the medium Chico Xavier, first time in English here at the Spirit Society of Richmond and at Kardec Radio together. We are better than alone, right? I hope that you can join me and I hope that is, those are moments of reflection for all of us together. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be with you. And I'd like to invite you for a initial prayer. We're going to start our initial prayer so that we can connect with the good spirits. We are also here live on Facebook, on YouTube of both Spirit Society of Richmond and of Kardec Radio. And also we'll be live on, we'll be here on Instagram of the Spirit Society of Richmond as well. Everywhere, anywhere that the good can be spread, we recommend that we all take that step. Be bold, be courageous, do the good, and join me on a prayer. If you're safe, if it's able, if you're able to close your eyes, Take a deep moment, a few moments for reflection and deep breaths and be in connection with ourselves. We pray for the God. Dear Mother, Father God, we are here today, blessed with the opportunity of study. We thank you for the blessings of this lifetime. We thank you for the teachings that you give us today. We are deeply indebted to the mediums and the spirit guides that guided these works. We hope that today we can connect with the good spirits, that dear God, our minds, and especially our hearts, are together with you, feeling the love that fl flows from you towards us. May your divine providence be felt everywhere on the planet. We ask you kindly, God, that this moment of reflection be of help to the good spirits. In both realms of life, we hope that we can donate of our time and our vitality to those who are in need. May the spirits that join us each and every day be helped by their guardian angels. May your messengers of light travel throughout the earth, bringing anyone and everyone consolation and hope for a better future. We ask you, dear Lord, that we are able to fulfill your will for us during this lifetime. And with your permission and with your protection, we begin our studies today. And so be it. Welcome, dear friends, to our study of the book Homo Certo by Emmanuel through the medium Chico Xavier. So I'm going to read to you chapter one. That is styled, he will answer the call. Well, let's see who he is, right? Emmanuel says, when you arrive at, the, at an instant considered terrible in the redemptive journey of earth, remember that despair is capable of suppressing your vision or place obstacles on your way. To many, this strange minute in the picture, I apologize, to many, this strange minute appears in the picture of an illness, for others in the form of the ash in which death temporarily subtracts the smile of a loved one. In many places, it takes the feature of spiritual crisis, annihilating hope, and still in others, that is that which arises by avalanche of interlinked trials, weakening our energy. No one escapes encounters with struggle, which differ for each one of us according to the goals we seek in the advancement of the spirit. This one is tormented with temptations. That one suffers from abandonment. Someone else cries for lost opportunities. And another mourns for the disappointments of his or her own fall. If you arrive at such moment, obscured by clouds of tears, 
Support yourself with patience. Listen to faith. Advise yourself with reflection and meditate with serenity. But do not seek the opinion of discouragement. Discouragement is the poisoned fruit of the illusion we have about ourselves. It makes us feel pretentiously superior to thousands of brothers and sisters who retain equality is no less worthy than ours, bear for love sacrificial burdens of which tiny parcels would crush our shoulders. Come discouragement as it may, make sure that the ideal way to break the shadow is to understand, to assist, bless, and serve always. Guard your troubled or wounded heart. Hurt or dishearten. Serve in favor of those who support you or who don't. Who understand or slander you. Even if all human support fails you suddenly, you have nothing to fear. You have with you at your front, back, left and right, the strength of the invisible companion who solves your problems with us asking you and who provides you with all of the resources indispensable to the peace and sustainment, sustainance of our days. He who loves, works and serves without rest expects you to love, work, and serve as much as you can. Unbestown to you, he accompanies you, your small progresses, and rejoices with you on your most intimate triumphs, assuring you tranquility and victory. He who saved you yesterday will save you today as well in whatever time place or circumstance when you feel on the brink of falling into temptation or anguish call on him he will answer you by the name of god and then we take a deep breath with the water that we have put aside what a moment of reflection did you know God is with me as much as is with you and as much as is with everybody else, regardless of who we are in this life, regardless of where we live, what we do, even if we dwell in evil, which in spiritism we know is lack of ignorance, God is still with them. Can you imagine? So let's go back. Now are we ready through it? Let's take a few excerpts and analyze because today you and I are living collectively struggles, collective trials during these moments of transition from trials and expiations to regeneration. There are a lot of difficulties out there and the spirits, high spirits like Emmanuel bring us valuable teachings each and every day. It's just up for you and I to open our minds and open our hearts so that we can receive the teachings right and he says remember that despair is capable of suppressing your vision or placing obstacles on your way so if you're suffering today know that if you were to call god will be with you but he says here do not despair because you don't want to put this cloud and be unable to see what's coming ahead because the trials are opportunities for us to learn. If we were to shift our vision between complaining about the difficulties and the pain and seeing pain as a tool for progress. Now, I'm not saying that pain is wonderful and that we want to be in pain. That's not what I'm saying, but we need to resign and resign in obedience to the designs of God to know that when pain comes is an opportunity. He says in many places we have 
you know, sometimes you're going to have illnesses. In other times, it will be death that will re remove the smile of a loved one. In other places, it says, this despair, these terrible struggles are the feature of spiritual crisis that take us home. Are you feeling hopeless? Are you going through difficulty either in the physical, spiritual, emotional? Don't despair because hope, you need to have hope and have to be faith and certainty in the future. He says, no one escapes the encounters with struggle and the struggles will differ for each one of us depending on where we are. So some struggles for others are more visible and some others are struggling without us knowing. Because sometimes we think about in this physical life, you and I, it's very easy to be lured by the luxuries and the facilities and the easiness of having things and having a better life. So sometimes those who have a lot are also those who are suffering. It's just not visible. And my struggle is different from your struggle. And there's nobody on the earth who doesn't have struggles. Even spirits in the caliber of Chico Xavier, Divaldo Franco, and others have had struggles. So who are we to think that we're not going to be struggling? And he says, if you arrive at such moment, let's say you and I are clouded by tears. He says, support yourself with patience, listen to faith, and advise yourself with reflection and meditate, who do not seek the opinion of discouragement. And I really want to emphasize the importance of reflection, the importance of meditation. In the Spirit's book, Question and Answer 919, the spirits give us the answer to the way that we can progress is by self-knowledge. And then later there'll be a dissertation by the spirit of St. Augustine that says that he describes that during his life, he would write down what he did and reflect upon it. And how did he do? Did anybody get upset or not? Did he fulfill his duties for the day? And that takes reflection, that takes meditation. And I invite you today to fight the urge to be in this cloud of busyness, being busy, doing things. The pandemic is really inviting us to, to go within, to go back to our families, to go back to ourselves. And this is, he's saying here, advise yourself with reflection and meditate with serenity. Because when you and I take the time to be here today studying, and to be meditating, maybe, I'm not saying you need to sit for it two hours, and if you can, that's wonderful, go for it, but it may be more of a moment where you're washing the dishes, you're washing your hands for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and that's your moment to breathe deeply and meditate, and say a mantra, say, please God may use me as your instrument for good, visualize yourself in the morning when the first thing you wake up, Go for prayer in the chapters 27, 28 of the gospel. The spirits bring to us the prayer is the duty of the man. Before you go to bed, take a few moments while you take care of your physical body, while you're maybe brushing your teeth, changing your clothes, you know, taking a shower. Take those moments for reflection and meditate and say, have I done everything that I planned to today? I'm not just going through the physical things, you know, wake up, brush teeth, go to work, drive, buy food. No, I'm inviting you to go deeper. I'm inviting you to go, and the spirits are inviting us to go deeper and say, what about we made a to-do list that includes spiritual acquisitions, you know, maybe kindness, goodness. Did I not react when someone hurt me? Did I see them as children of God? Even the people who hurt us, even the folks who are doing atrocities out there, they're still children of God. And how do I know that? Because the spirits tell us in many in the book, Living Spring, message 30, he says that you and I have the gene, the DNA of divinity inside of us. From the moment God created us, God has seen us our, and us in our potential. God has loved us the same from then to now. So we need to look at one another, more our physical bodies and more than our own difficulties, our gifts, and our shortcomings. We need to see ourselves as multi-dimensional, multi-millionary, as spirits in progress. So even if you come to the conclusion that that day 
wasn't as productive, not a problem. Say, like, forgive yourself, move on, and move forward. And he says, guard your troubled and or wounded heart, hurt or disheartened. And what do we do with that? Serve in favor of those who support you or who don't, who understand you or slander you. And love your enemies, right? So he's saying, even if you don't feel supported, even if someone hurts you, he says, work in favor of them, regardless, because we really want to embody this daily activities, these daily exercises where you and I are day by day chiseling away our imperfections and like a sculpture, sculpting ourselves with goodness. And there are opportunities of service each and every day, everywhere. Even if all human support fails you suddenly, you have nothing to fear. Even if you found yourself alone, because you and I came to this world the same way, and we're going to live the physical world the same way. We all need to be born in a family. and We're all going to die. Yet, my journey is mine, your journey is yours to live. Even if you felt yourself alone, he says, don't, you have nothing to fear because you have the knowledge in spiritism that you're never alone. Your spirit guides, the higher spirits who love you, the higher spirits who support your reincarnation are there each and every day for you and I to be attuned to them. They will come. It says, you have with you, and there's an interesting way of putting it, right? At your front, back, left, and right, meaning everywhere. The strength of the invisible companion who solves your problems without asking you. And who provides with you with all of the resources indispensable to the peace and sustainment of your days. Who is this person or this being? He who loves, works, and serves without rests. Okay, now he's describing God, loves, works, and serves without rest. This should be our aim, to always love, to always work, and serve others. However, he expects you and I to love, work, and serve as much as we can, because there's no other way. Without charity, there's no salvation, and charity can be given of what you don't need to others, but it can also be the giving of yourself. It can be the giving of your time to help someone. It can be the giving of your um, of your time to raise another human being in parent, parenthood. And if you're not a parent, it can be serving at your job, not just complaining, but as an opportunity to serve. Because we come back with the group of spirits that we need to work on one another. Who knows who those people were in our lives? Perhaps we are with them for a reason. We need to serve them. We need to work with them. And he says, unbeknownst to you, he accompanies you, your small progress, and rejoices with your most intimate triumphs, assuring your tranquility and victory. So he is here supporting us. He's given this invisible strength. So when was the last time you felt this invisible strength of God within you? Have you thought about stopping and doing a deep breath and thinking about God, not as this being sitting on a cloud waiting for you and I, but this energy, this intelligence that is behind everything and everyone? And then you take this deep breath, and if you go to the book Genesis, you're going to see it there, the good spirits brings to us that, Divine providence is everywhere. The same way that the sun is radiating and you and I have different capacities, different beings have different capacities of perceiving the sunlight and producing with the sunlight, just like you and I cannot do what the plants do and vice versa. They perceive the sun and they use the sun energy in a different way. Divine providence is everywhere. The good spirits can filter it and use it in a different way than you and I. But then if you if you envision yourself as this sponge and you're soaking up this divine providence and this invisible strength will come to you and God will send the good spirits to help us and aid us. 
And even if we are in difficulties, Emmanuel says here, he who saved you yesterday will save you today as well. And saving is just salvation, is just a removing you from danger and from temptation, right? It's not like he's going to save us and take us to heaven, but just as keeping us from temptation in whatever time, place, day, or circumstances, when you feel in the brink of falling in temptation and anguish, call on him. He will answer you by the name of God. So even if you are the one who are in despair, if you are the one who is going through difficulties, or you may know someone who is going through despair and difficulties, take a deep breath to feel this invisible strength all around you. And you call. And how do you call God? You pray. You pray deep from the bottom of your heart and you pray, God, give me Give me the strength. Give me the strength to continue. It's up to you, not to me. How was the last time you woke up and you went through mentally through your prayers and you said, God, I'm here for you. Show me the way. And not only that, not only us as adults doing this, but in putting that seed in the new generations that they are here to serve God that you and I have our reincarnatory plans. We're going to go through difficulties. Guess what? We are humans incarnated on this earth to progress together, serving. God is serving, as Emmanuel says, all the time. But he expects us to serve, love, and help as much as we can. And that's the invitation I make you today, that you can serve, that you can love all the time. Today is the day that you and I start. By putting ourselves at the service of God. And the good spirits will come. The good spirits will be here with you, with me, with everyone. We just have to open our hearts to feel them with us always. All right, dear friends, this is it for chapter one. And I will be here with you every Tuesday at 8 a.m. at the Spirit Society of Richmond, at Kardec Radio, on YouTube, on Facebook, like, subscribe, follow, make sure you have access to this content. Have a little bit of water with you as we, I'm going to invite you again for our final prayer. If you're, if it's safe to do so, if you're not operating machinery, you're taking care of little ones who need your undivided attention, and even if you are. In Spiritism, we know that prayer has no recipe. You can pray anywhere, all the time. So I'm just, if you're able to do so, use those moments of prayer as meditation moments as you close your eyes to eliminate some of the visual stimuli all around you. Repeat the words of the prayer mentally, mine or anyone else's, so we can radiate out this beauty and we can call to God to come and help us, shall we? Dear Mother, Father God, we are here today blessed with the opportunity of being together. Dear Lord, we pray that we are mindful of your presence in our lives, that we are thankful for all the blessings, visible and invisible, that we receive each and every day. We pray, dear Lord, that we are able to feel your love and your kindness flowing through all of us. From the depths of the universe, from all of the places on the earth, may we feel enveloped by your kindness and by your love. May we feel inspired during our daily activities to serve and love, just as you love us each and every day. May we feel your presence. May we resign to your will for our lives during this reincarnation. If we are ever to feel despair and loneliness, may we know that deep inside of our hearts, your presence can be felt. Dear Lord, please inspire us towards the good. Inspire us to be in connection with you. 
Inspire us to serve and love and help our fellow human beings wherever we are in this world. May we be of service to you. We pray for all of those who make our lives on this planet easier. We pray for those who are in hospitals and their healthcare workers. We pray for those who are in prisons, jails. We pray for those in orphanages, those who are homeless, those who have homes but still feel empty of you. We pray for those who are doing the good works of spreading your good news all throughout the earth. And we pray for all of those who are still hardened in the path of evil and ignorance. May your love and your kindness be bestowed all around us. May we feel the loving embrace of Master Jesus, who is calling on us to help him during these moments of transition. May we feel connected with you today and always with your guidance, asking for your protection and with your permission. We end our studies today, and so be it. Dear friends, thank you for joining me. God willing, I'll be here with you again next week, Tuesdays at 8 a.m. with another study of the book, Right Path, Homo Seto by Emmanuel and Chico Chevrier. May you have a blessed day or a blessed night, and I'll see you next time.